with my soul, oh, baby, oh my God. But can we still behave like this? Strengthside was one of the first people to make crawling acceptable in a gym. To you, like, there's all these different modalities, natural movement, functional movement, primal movement, animal movement. To you, like, what, what names do you ascribe to it? What words do you use to describe it as mm. someone who teaches it regularly? Mm, it's a good question. I mean, I've always just liked using the phrase ground movement because, yeah, I think like there's so many training modalities that are actually already using um, what someone might call animal movement or <laughs> primal movement. But like if you talk to like a modern dancer, it's not like they're like thinking of it as like, well, now I'm doing my animal movements here. It's like, that's just how you move, you know? Yeah. And the same goes for a lot of martial arts, um, gymnastics, parkour. Like these things are just in, in the practice. They're, they're almost just like the foundations, the basics of um, body awareness to then go get more complex into your sport or activity. So it's just, it's all movement. And I think what we're kind of discussing right now is like movement that is in relationship to the ground and maybe low to the ground. Yeah, low to the ground. Yeah, I like that phrase, low to the ground. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I want to do like a, it feels a video grounded. called low to the ground. Yeah, I mean, I would also maybe add that it's uh, very much in relation to your, um, to gravity as well. It, and like everything always is in relationship to gravity, the ground, your center of gravity, like, you know, but I think what we're saying is um, purposely maybe lowering your center of gravity mm -hmm. and purposely thinking about practicing your relationships to those things yes. rather than it just being a byproduct of doing something else. Like let's actually distill that yes. and work on that yeah. relationship. Yeah, so if we dive into like what functional actually is because this is like a phrase that's used so much right functional we've fitness, got the answer functional strength uh f you know functional <laughs> movement and uh but what i really think functional is is uh it's very context dependent and at the heart of it it's being able to interact with uh, your environment or with the game you're playing. Yeah, like within a set of doing. rules. Exactly, or something. within yeah. a set of rules. Um, but if we think back to like us as humans and us, you know, evolving over time, like the thing that's always been the common denominator, there's always ground, mm -hmm. right? And before tables and chairs, um, we had to use the ground so much more. We had to like yeah. use the ground as our, our tool to like prepare things and to sit on and to sleep on. And we were always like, changing levels and, and, and we were so much more comfortable with the ground. Um, so I think as a human being, like f if you really want to be functional, then you should really be exploring that relationship as much as you can. Yeah, yeah. You, we just put out a video not too long ago, um, The Forgotten Primal Movement. Yeah. It's kind of about this topic. If you haven't mm -hmm. seen it, go check it out. Um, but there's some really like physical, physiological, practical ways that we can like conceive of why this is important. But also, you know, there's, there's all, there's all different kinds of reasons too. Like some of the physical ones would be like, you know, sitting on the floor more, you get more flexible for sure. Yeah. Like we've seen that in ourselves. We've coached people through that. Um, what else? Well, just to go on that one a little bit more, like moving, like if you look at a dancer, a dancer is not trying to improve their flexibility necessarily, but through through what we're talking about, maybe they are trying to improve right, their flexibility, right. but but through movement, yeah, through dance, through movement, you're not trying to improve your flexibility, but you're getting better at accessing functional ranges of motion because you're telling your body, "This is important. I need to do this. I want to. I want to do this." Um, so so. You, like over time, it looks like you're really flexible, mm -hmm. like you're really mobile and you are, but it's not necessarily in this traditional sense of like, ah, uh, like I can, 
bring my head to my toe necessarily. It's like I'm gaining this functional flexibility. Yeah, there's, I mean, when you watch it, there's a fluidity to it. There's a, like, it's a coordination aspect. And, yep. and I've definitely experienced that myself. Like, um, you know, I've, I've worked on different versions of splits and like bridges and things. Mm. But I, when I do it in isolation, oftentimes I'm able to access this stuff. But then when I go and like try to use it somewhere, especially if it's newer to me, like can't access it. Mm. And that to me means like I don't really have that range of motion. Yeah. You know, not right. until I can just do it when I want to do it or when, or probably more importantly, unexpectedly, you yeah. know, right. when, you're, when you have to do it. Yeah. Out of necessity. Yep. Yep. Um, Climbing yeah. is a good example of that, right? Like, mm, yeah. Maybe you could do the splits, but then when you need to do something on the wall, it's like you don't feel comfortable going. All the way there into that position that if you went to the ground in a more controlled safe environment you could do it um so yeah, yeah. A, a person that comes to mind is tom wexler he's not incredibly flexible or like incredibly strong or anything but yeah. then when you watch him move it's so fluid that he looks like a piece like gumby you know yeah just just waving in the wind Yes, yes, exactly. Tom's a good example. Look Tom up on Instagram, Tom Wexler. I think that also leads into to, to another one is like when you see people move and it's like you just it looks beautiful. Like the, it's it's hard to describe. It's like there's this X factor there that this person has total control. Mm. You know? Yeah. And really I think it's like an athlete's ability to uh, be in relationship to space in themselves, right? And it's like a dancer is a great example of this, but even more traditional sports like basketball, like Michael Jordan, right? Like anybody would watch him and be like, this guy's just masterful. He, he has a masterful presence. And really what it is is it's, a, is it's like a, a, a presence between his relationship to gravity, and himself and like his ability to like always know where he's at and to and to turn gravity off once in a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh isn't that's like a nice little tiktok meme these days yeah yeah I alexa alexa please turn gravity off have you seen that no no oh i thought that's what you were referencing um <laughs> no it's just michael jordan jumps really right <laughs> But you'll see it like in any sport, anybody that's very masterful is like, like I like to think of like baseball players, like middle oh, infield, yeah. shortstops, like these guys, man, like the, the control that they have and being able to move low to the ground, but... And track an object. And track an object, yeah. That's moving so fast. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, and that's what I think we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about is like with sports you described this to me earlier were very nice like with a lot of traditional sports as we grow up you're concentrated on something outside of yourself an external object there's like a ball in so many sports but for some of us we're missing like this internal awareness because we're so uh focused outside right and that's why i think like you know, people who grow up with wrestling or martial arts, like they have more of this internal compass to like know where your body is in space. And that's not to say it's the best thing because a lot of them couldn't catch a ball if you like threw it at them, you know? But it is something that I think to be like a, a nice mover and to be, have like well-rounded mover, you should have both. Yeah, it's so interesting that there are people who like, did the same things we did, but they just had that internal awareness. And yeah. I don't know what it was. Like, yeah. I, don't, I feel like I didn't have a strong internal awareness, but I could definitely do a lot with a basketball, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I think that's why it was so important for us. And like, we feel so passionate about this. It's because we, we didn't have it naturally. And like, we had to dive deep into it. To... It's a deficit. Yeah. And it always feels really, really good to to bring up a deficit and to get and potentially make it a strength yeah exactly aside from the physical though i think we've gotten a lot of a lot out of the maybe more like philosophical or softer sides of 
the practice, the, what are we calling it? Ground, ground movement. Ground movement. <clears throat> um, well, I think like the physical pieces, the external pieces are really, um, they're almost quite obvious and, and they're more superficial, obviously. But I think the greater gains are in our like mental, you know, inside mm -hmm. of our body, even spiritually, you know. I think that so many people grow up playing a sport, but then when you hit the college range, you stop. And what are we like expected to do? You're expected to go to the gym, you start lifting weights. It's more of this traditional sense of exercising, which isn't bad, but it's only one piece. And most of us are missing what we got from the sport, which like there's a lot of things, but one big one is like creativity you know, expression, like the ability to move out of linear fashions, mm -hmm. move organically, right? Mm -hmm. That's what happened for me when I started moving these ways was I was like, oh, this is like ticking a creative box for me. You know what I mean? This is, yeah. this is expression of my movement. This is like a way to change how I'm being in the world and how I'm like holding myself and and, and experiencing this this reality, basically. It's not to say that you can't get a little bit of this from your strength and conditioning practice. Like, you can feel good and you can change the way you are through doing pull-ups and doing deadlifts and stuff, but it's not quite the same as when there's no means to an end, of when there's no goal to get to. It's just like, I'm moving because I can move. Yeah, it's so interesting because I think when you always are ambitious, trying to reach goals, and I think that's very much how um, most people go about their training, going to the gym. It's yeah. like you're always trying to add something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're never enough. Yeah. So if you're not enough, you don't really get to live in the moment. You're like you're you're always thinking about what's next. Yeah. Uh, and so like I think a lot of these practices allow you to get out of that mindset and just mm. be in the moment, be yourself, express yourself, mm. what you're saying. But I think that's that distinct um, difference between being ambitious and just being is very important. Being versus becoming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the gym setting puts you in that wanting more. Yeah. But man, like, yeah, just being here. Um, and I think in a healthy, in a health, a healthy way to think about it is like they should support each other. Yeah. Um, when you're, Their when you're, system. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You should, like, you should have a healthy balance of both of those. Um, because, like, oftentimes when you're, when you're being, you'll notice things that you want to work on and then you get to go become that thing. Exactly. But if you just are taking the, um, if you're thinking about what you want to become without, ever like actually like being in that state yeah and thinking practicing something. practicing something and then seeing like having that kind of dictate then you're probably just trying to become something that someone else wants you to be anyways mm, yeah yeah that's a good way to put it yeah yeah so also i think that um there's greater potential to go into flow mm. when you're doing uh an activity that's that's um that you can get lost in right so like flow is often de described as like a timeless state right um and once again like you can experience a bit of flow maybe in like your strength and conditioning work but i don't think there's necessarily like the there needs to be like risk and there needs to be unknown hmm. and that's what you get from like a game and that's what you get from just moving your body like dance with no, uh, like for no particular outcome, just yeah. to do that thing. And there's also like this, for most of us, there's like this self-conscious piece. Like, oh fuck, like this is scary to, to, to do this, especially in public, but even <laughs> privately, it can be like, am I like, wow, this is weird, you know? <laughs> like yeah. when you overcome that, there's a greater potential for flow kind of like going back to what we were talking about, obviously when you're in the gym, strength and conditioning, it's very ego driven. It just is like that's, it's, it's trying to become something else. Um, when you're able to get like 
tamp down that insecure part of you and and just like move and allow that to 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 be like mm. that is a flow state mm. you know what i mean and yeah and so like <clears throat> if you're playing sports regularly you're able to do that like most of us did as kids like we dropped yeah. into flow states all the time that was probably more regular than not yeah. um just playing sports messing around whatever but as adults like we don't get that as often and so if you can find a practice you know maybe what we're talking about but just like any activity going and playing basketball once in a while like just just get, find find something that allows you to get to that spot yep it changes your perspective on how you move in the world um it's huge yeah and I, I think another like big part of that I've found with um, with moving um, organically, let's say, is um, problem solving. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but if you're doing something like, say, you're training a handstand, there is some problem solving there. Even like bench pressing, there's some problem solving, but it's at such a low end of the spectrum versus if you're climbing, if you're doing parkour. Even if you're just doing some animal type movements, trying to learn a new movement or something, mm -hmm. like there's this problem solving that your mind has to go through, and that is so healthy for us as humans, I think, to figure something out and to go from I can't do this thing to working on it for a certain amount of time. Now I can do this thing. There's so much wealth of knowledge to be gained there. Yeah. I, I mentioned this on the last one we did about climbing. But don't watch that one. Watch this one. Yeah, stay here. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> there's there's this thing that happens when you're problem solving, where you're you find yourself thinking about it later, mm -hmm. right? Your subconscious is still chewing on it, yeah. trying to like figure it out, even though you're not physically doing it right now. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, <laughs> I think this is really important. Um, we're always problem solving. That's what anxiety is. Mm. We're always like planning like, oh, well, I got to figure out like how I'm going to do this later and also, you know, fit this into my schedule and pay this bill. Mm. But if you're doing activities regularly that are forcing you to problem solve, all of a sudden, instead of thinking about anxious thoughts, you're thinking about like, well, man, like I can't believe I missed that arm bar on that guy yesterday, like how am I gonna hit that next time? Mm. Or that route, like I just can't figure it out, but maybe if I, you know, so like it, it gives your brain something to do and I think that's really healthy. Yeah. So you've been doing this stuff for quite some time now. How'd you like discover it in a time when it wasn't maybe as popular? Yeah, um, so there was actually a various things that went on in, in life when I started to get more into uh, ground movement. And that was, number one, I got injured. <laughs> so I couldn't um, do the, the heavy barbell lifts that I wanted to do. So I had to find something else and kind of like thinking about, oh, maybe I'll try to develop a handstand. That like steered me in the journey of, discovering some people in the field that were moving like this and first was like GMB mm -hmm. um, and uh, another one was Cameron Shane oh I um, forgot about that guy yeah we watched that documentary I think we both did um, okay. but ultimately it was that then I found Ido Portal and uh, I was like amazed by his movement and it wasn't really like his his um, his strength movement I think a lot of people were drawn to like his one arm handstands and everything for me it was like what is this like rhythmicality that he moves with like these making these like movements just seem so beautiful and from that I, I found out that he practiced capoeira for a long uh, amount of years so I was instantly like all right I want to do capoeira so I started practicing uh, with a local school for a few years and um, but around that same time was when uh, we started like dancing more. Mm -hmm. So it was like this, this, this kind of like this, <laughs> this pot of like all these different variables going in and me just finding like so much benefit in like different ways of moving like this low to the ground. 
um, and just wanting to explore more and more and just getting like really obsessed with it, really. I think there's one, maybe even earlier stage than that. Yeah. I don't know if you, I'm sure you remember, but we got in, we were like really into, I don't know, I guess like training functionally. And so actually a lot of physical therapists were using like crawling and rolling. And I think that was literally mm. my first introduction was like you could use rolling, uh, rolling, crawling as a, uh, as a corrective exercise yeah, right. first yeah and then all of a sudden we started like or at least i started seeing gmb using it and Nito portal and i was like oh like that but that also looks a little different than like yeah. the, how a physical therapist might use it yeah. too right yeah um that's a great point because um i remember reading this guy's book called original strength I mm, I yeah i don't remember his name but um he was just doing like all these it, it was all these fundamental develop developmental positions from mm -hmm. babies right and uh and then crawling was a huge one and uh i made this 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 youtube short that uh went kind of viral about crawling for five minutes a day and that was actually the first thing that i ever did before i found gmb and Edo portal was um I, I did that like climb or crawled for five minutes a day for like a month or two months i can't remember at this point but uh, that was that was actually the yeah the lead in yeah yeah, well, it's so cool to see how, I mean, you you almost led the conversation with this, but how all these different people from all these different backgrounds are kind of coming to the same conclusion that yeah. like we've lost our our relationship or connection to the ground and yeah. we just need to get a little lower once in a while yeah. and, and all of a sudden like your body moves better, you feel better. Yeah. I don't know, it's, yeah. there's, there's so definitely in, something there. In your last video, um, why am I blanking on the name? It just went out yesterday. Train your body all day. Yeah. Um, you the, mentioned the secret. The secret is to train your body all day. At the end of the video, you mentioned Katie Bowman in uh, her book, Move Your DNA. Your DNA. Yeah. Uh, which I think it's like these same concepts, but more in a lifestyle mm -hmm. um, frame of reference. Uh, so just like using chairs less and and, and I think like this is kind of one end of the spectrum of like just creating your life to be more functional like it used to be. Uh, and then the other end of the, the, the spectrum is, is just like taking that further into maybe your sports and activities involve um, being low to the ground and, and rolling and using the ground in a more higher complex situation, more chaotic situation you could say. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think I mean, both are so important. It's cool to see, yeah, I mean, because it even, it even scales up to acrobatics and stuff, right? Like, where it doesn't always have to be low to the ground, but yeah. I think, a, like, the foundation is, is the ground. Is low to the ground, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, like you mentioned with acrobatics, this is just another form of controlling your body in space. I was going to say against gravity, with gravity. Way more poetic. Um, <laughs> so, but, but yeah, like that has to be developed over time and then you can like expand what you're doing. Right? Well, you have to learn. So essentially I think what we're, what we're getting as you have to, it's like your relationship to your center of gravity and the ground and gravity and all this stuff. Yeah. And like, um, where is your center of gravity? <laughs> it's right here, man. <laughs> this is where I live. But you uh, said that earlier. Yeah. I think it's, Nice well, to I mean, explain. Uh, I think like a lot of people in our modern culture think that their center is their head. Yeah. You know, and, and like the set, your center of your body or the center of your gravity is, you know, somewhere in here. Yeah. Um, and so like, that's really what we're talking about is you're developing your relationship with the understanding of where your center is and how it, that, um, spatially how that interacts with the environment. Yeah. And so like, there's a reason why if you go to a tricking class, the whole warm up is done mostly on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like you're not jumping a bunch, mm -hmm. you're doing all these like ground movements because you're just kind of getting, you're tuning to your body and how it interacts with the environment. Yeah. And then you can start going up. Yeah. But like first you have to root down. Oh, yeah, I like that word tuning, you're tuning to your environment, yeah, yeah. Why? lead with crawling because i think on the on the strength side channel what people most often see is crawling but there's all kinds of stuff you can do on the ground that's just that's just one example 
Um, why do you lead with crawling? Yeah, it's, it's, I think crawling is the most accessible thing. I, I think it, it makes sense to a lot of people. Oh, yeah, like I did crawl as a baby. Like that's how we develop into walking and, and moving more in locomotion. That's our first locomotive pattern, basically. Um, so anybody can crawl. I haven't met anyone yet that couldn't crawl. <laughs> considering they have an able body. Yeah. Um, but most adults can't do it very well, you yeah. know, if yeah. you've spent more and more time away from that type of movement. And, and like you were saying earlier, like it's, it's, a, it's almost just a corrective exercise. Like it can teach your core and your hips and your shoulders to move together again, something that you may have lost from doing tons of sitting and tons of computer work. Or like isolating exercises, or, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, a lot of bench press and push-ups, now you have to use that same strength, but you're using it um, contralaterally, you're using it one side at a time, like this is human movement. Human movement is not together, it's apart, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to sum it up, like crawling is great. Everyone should crawl, in my opinion. So how do you see these ideas we're talking about? How do they fit into the, the world that we live in that's really dominated by sports that are very like externally focused, maybe ego driven as well, and like fitness community, strength and conditioning? Um, like where, where does this yeah, fit it's, in? It's like everything's driven through like external, superficial competition. Um, and honestly, like I think that's not going to stop, you know, like that's, that's flashy. That's what sells. It's sexy. Um, and that's going to keep being popular. But as we grow as a culture, uh, and move forward into time, more and more people are working out more and more people are doing physical things. You know, if you look back in the fifties, barely anybody did because it just, it, it wasn't like, like we weren't comfortable enough to start focusing on that yet. Now we are. So, the whole superficial, traditional bodybuilding, uh, hit, uh, booty building, all that stuff's going to keep growing. But the, the, these, these niche communities that we're talking about, those are going to keep growing as well. Because like, I mean, like we go to the climbing gym at night, it's freaking packed, mm -hmm. you know? Why is it packed? Because people are like, whoa. Like this is, you know, I'm with my friends, I'm figuring out these problems, I'm using my physical capabilities. Like this is, like people are realizing this is what it means to be human. Like these are good ways to be spending my time. The same thing goes if you go to a parkour meetup. You're outside eight hours maybe like <laughs> doing parkour, but also just like chatting with your friends and like getting food and stuff like that. And I think that people intuitively know like if you're more taking this traditional route of what you see as popular you know something's missing mm -hmm. there's something missing you stopped playing a sport in high school but there was a reason why you liked that sport there was a reason why you played when you were a kid people are realizing this and i think it's going to keep growing and i think i feel i think we feel motivated to share more of this because it's like hey what you think you have to do that's not what you have to do. Nobody's forcing you to do that. You can do things that, um, that make you feel more human. Definitely. Whew, monologue over. <laughs> well, how do you feel okay. about that? Exclamation mark. Um, one common thread I hear, because I, I get to be a, uh, a part of a lot of these different niche communities. You know? yeah. I do some dance. I do some martial arts. I climb. Like... Yep. parkour so i get to be around all these communities and, and one common thread i hear people did the conventional thing yeah and they rejected it because they felt like something was missing mm. like almost every person you talk to is like yeah no i'm like i was working out and stuff but like i don't know i didn't feel that good <laughs> then i found this thing yeah, right right like, and I think most people, you know, you talked about your journey, like most people are just like one life event away from maybe finding that thing. Maybe it, it's an injury. Maybe it's just you meet someone who you think is cool and they do this thing, like whatever yeah. it is, yeah. but, but don't, don't shy away from it. 
Yeah. You know, like I, I, cause I know I was blind to it for a long time. Mm. And, and then once like one thing happened that just like opened my mind to one activity, all of a sudden I was like, what else is there in the world? You yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what's cool is when you, man, when you're in these niche communities, you really see like they're super welcoming. Yeah. Some of the nicest people you've ever met. And I don't think that's by accident. Like there's something to being humbled all the time to, mm. to constantly working on stuff, um, to better yourself, not just to win a competition, but to just like yeah. better yourself. Yeah. I think that it really creates a lot of character. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the really, like one of the things I really love most about, I think parkour and climbing are like really similar. And I think that like if you go to, and you're hanging out with a group of friends or whatever it is, and you're doing parkour or climbing, it doesn't matter that this guy's working on this mm -hmm. extreme thing and you're working on the super beginner thing. You guys are both in the process of figuring this problem out and building momentum to get yourself to be able to do it. And maybe this guy's doing a V12 or he's doing a freaking side flip over a gap and you're just, you know, trying to do this four foot jump or whatever. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter your level. It doesn't matter like how advanced or capable you are. It's like just developing this, like, I want to like overcome something. And I mean, that's like really philosophical, but I think like that's the power of a lot of these sports. And I think that just the basic thing of like learn, like exposing yourself to some, some ground movement, to some crawling, to some rolling, like basic gymnastics. Can you do a cartwheel? You know, like these basic things are just asking yourself, Hey, can I figure this out? Can I do something that's a bit different than what is normal and what people think I should be doing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why should you move? I mean, yeah, that's kind of the, the question that we're, we're like flirting around right now, right? Like, yeah. why should you move? I think it, it, everyone's going to have a different answer to why you should move. But essentially, like, you should move because you can. To mm -hmm. be human is to move. Yeah. So, um, you know, to be human is not to sit in this chair all day long. It could be if you make it that, but like there's greater potential inside of you and to mm. be able to explore these different realms of movement. That, that's what I think. Why do you think you should move? Yeah. What, uh, when I was writing that question earlier, what I was, what I was kind of thinking is like, should you move to get better at the specific thing you're doing? Or like, should you move to get more, become more athletic, to have yeah. fun, yeah. like whatever. Sure. Um, and I think the answer is like, yes, it's yeah. all of them. Yeah. And your motivation or the reason why could change from day to day, from week to week, or even just like, even just like minute to minute in a session, you yeah. know, like you, you, um, but the, but the fact that it could, those could all be the reasons Yeah. is pretty incredible. And that means there's something super valuable here. Mm, yeah. Yeah. There's so much to get out of this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Like I think, uh, um, I've always been, you know, in this mindset of that injuries are like our, our best teachers in life. Um, especially for athletes and people who are valuing the physical experience. And there's this, I think there's this thing that a lot of people go through when, um, you're, maybe you're younger, you're pushing yourself more, you're competitive in a sport or an activity, and then you have an injury or you have a setback and you can't push yourself as much in that thing anymore. Or you just go through a period of time where you can't even like play your sport, you know? And when you get back to it, you're not worried about, can I do a 360 dunk or can I do this specific movement that I was pushing myself so hard to get? You're just so happy to be back moving. You're just so happy to be, oh my gosh, like it feels so good to just be out here dribbling the ball, being able to shoot around, you know, I couldn't do this for three months. Like, and, and I think for me, that's always just an indicator of just like 
the process of moving is so nice and it's fun to push yourself. It's fun to develop the new skills and, and whatnot and the, the more tricks. But at the end of the day, it's about just moving. And, and I think, I remember I heard Ido Portal say it one time on a podcast and I thought it was just so like profound that like he was saying how people think they love CrossFit or people think that they love the martial art that they're doing. Um, and they become like really like ingrained in the culture and they're like, this is what I do. But really they don't understand that they love the movement. They love mm -hmm. how the movement feels in their body. And uh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think like we should just be taking every opportunity to move, to learn new things, to try new activities out, to be able to be competent in multiple uh, movement variations. Like that's a good way to live. Yeah. And be, be comfortable with being incompetent. Yes. Because I think that's, that's the impetus for change is, mm. is like embracing incompetence and just saying like, n not only am I not going to see this as a negative, I'm going to see it as a positive because I get, to, I get to be excited about learning this new thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And if that interests you, we've kind of dove into that topic a little bit more on some of the past uh, yeah, podcast, which episode, was the one where we talked about four. why we changed episode yeah. four. Yeah. Also in the climbing one that was the, the recent release before this one, you guys talk a lot about being new at something and the value in that. And yeah, I would go dig into those. Cool. How can people start? Find me. Strength side. <laughs> I thought that's what you were going to say. <laughs> start finding you. How can people? Uh, how can people start if they've never done anything like this before? Yeah, if this is like brand new, but it's like you're like, well, oh, this makes sense. Um, I think like best ways are start crawling around on the ground. Um, you know, Maybe check sit on the ground. Sit on the ground more. Start thinking about your relationship to the ground. Check out some. YouTube videos, there's a lot of cool people doing uh, primal movement type stuff, animal movement type stuff. Just be careful because it's becoming such a popular phrase that uh, any <laughs> fitness person wants to maybe throw that in. But um, yeah. uh, we have a good video on strength side, five primal movements. Those are like probably movements that you could figure out in one day. You won't yeah. necessarily be great at them, but, uh, but you could figure them out and keep getting better. Uh, what would you say? Yeah, I think to add on to those, I think like a cartwheel and and learning how to roll, like shoulder roll, are yeah. are um, maybe not exactly where to start if you've never done anything like this, but those are really good goals, like to get really good at both of those. Yeah. Um, they they get you like they really change your perspective because you're changing your your head has to go upside down yeah. or in all different directions, and you'll feel really disoriented, and that's good. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, you can just, if you don't want to do it on your own, you can find all kinds of different activities and classes that like use, use the ground, um, dance, like, uh, like contemporary dance. There's beginner classes, you yeah. know, um, there, you could go to a jujitsu gym. You could, um, go to a parkour meetup. Yes. Or a parkour class. Like it's all, it's all becoming more and more popular. Capoeira, um, any of these types of things that, gymnastics, any of these types of things that um, get you controlling your body more and, and working with your body and, and bringing the attention more internal. Uh, I recommend like not thinking that there's like, <laughs> well, there isn't like a best way to do this. Mm. Um, I think it really just relates to, hey, what are you interested in? Maybe something catches your eye. Maybe uh, your friend's really into BJJ and you just haven't Taken, taken the leap to go to a beginner class with him, do it. Maybe you're really attracted to how the capoeira people move like I was back in the day. Um, go take a class, right? Like follow your interests, follow, follow what excites you. Can't, can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. All right. Is that it? That's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, like the video, um, we're a new channel, so like all the you know, comments, likes, subscribe all that stuff really helps us and that is we want to keep making these videos yeah uh, we'll see you next time and we will keep making them drop a comment below about what you want to see peace i think i just look like like someone who goes skiing a lot and you know stays in like
mansion cabins and stuff. Yeah. Just flew in from L.A. Yeah, you probably, like, hunt elk, but, like, you don't actually have to do it. Like, other people kind of do it. You're just there. You get yeah, to take the shot, that. though. Yeah. 